Hello Feds Wearers, this is the Warriors TARDIS, which many of you have asked me to make a video about, for good reason. I can confidently say that this is one of the most immersive and realistic TARDISes in the whole of Gmod. It has very detailed texturing, extremely realistic lighting, and the most in-depth sound design I think I've ever seen before. But before we get into that, I should probably explain who the Warrior is, as it has a lot of needed context for this TARDIS. In simple terms, the Warrior, otherwise known as the Doctor of War, is the fifth Doctor but in a different universe. In this other universe, the fourth Doctor Tom Baker fulfilled a mission for the Time Lords, where he ordered the creation of the Daleks, as seen in the serial Genesis of the Daleks, and this sparked the Time War much earlier than it did in the main universe. In our universe, during this era, the Doctor had the 1983 TARDIS, meaning in the other universe he would have had something similar but is in ruins basically, and that TARDIS is the Warriors TARDIS. As the Warrior is only a thing in Big Finish audios, the only time this TARDIS has been seen is on animated trailers, which do look really good to be fair. The exterior is shaped very similarly to the Sharda TARDIS, which I actually have a model for here. As you can see, they're basically the same height, with a similar width. Obviously, there's going to be a few dimensional differences, like the size of the lamps and where they're placed, but on the whole, it's pretty obvious that this is based off the Sharda TARDIS. The exterior skin for this has such a cool texture. It has a lot of dirt patches everywhere and a bit of discoloration, which really helps show how this TARDIS has been through a lot because of the time war. I mean, you know it's good attention to detail when even the lock is starting to rust a bit. Even if you disregard all this dirt and things, the wood texture itself is also just really good. The color, the color of the windows is very unique. It follows the lighting of the interior, but even if you don't know about that, it still looks really cool. This is the only skin available for this TARDIS. This is the only skin available for this TARDIS. However, the windows do change colour sometimes, but I'll talk about that after I show you the interior, because it's just way too cool. There's so much to talk about here, so I guess I'll just start by talking about the textures and some small details that you may not even notice. Then I'll talk about the sound design and the lighting. Because all these things are so good, it results in this being the most immersive TARDIS in Gmod at least in my opinion. As soon as you come in here, the mood is set straight away, that being a dark, gloomy atmosphere. It looks just like it does in the trailer, and in certain places it just looks even better. Like over here, in the trailer the wires are just going into the wall, but if I put on my torch, you'll notice that there's actually a visible bit of circuitry, and just general TARDIS hardware in there. It's such a cool and unique detail. I believe in the original trailer, this is referencing the time when the sixth Doctor tried to fix the comedian circuit, so this adding circuitry just leads into that a bit more, which is really nice. Speaking Speaking of the wires, there's so many wires hanging from the ceilings, dropping off the walls and things. It's kind of like how it is in the Coral and War Doctor TARDISes, but this is just a bit more extreme, because they're literally everywhere. This floor panel here has also been moved slightly to make way for more wires and things to go under the console. That along with the keyboard on the console and the before mentioned wires, just emphasises how this TARDIS is in ruins and just quite frankly breaking down. To be honest, this interior has a lot of stuff like that, with a bunch of piping and things in these air vents, and down here too, and even under the floor. If you saw my video where I reviewed every new Who Doctor's TARDIS, I showed a version of the 11th Doctor's TARDIS that has dark lighting with this really cool sort of dust thing under the light and around the console. Well, this interior has something very similar to that. You may be able to faintly see it here. I've no idea how it's been made or why I love it so much. It's probably because it's just such a realistic element that you probably won't even think about until you notice it. It's really cool and it's surprisingly not even distracting, and it kind of just makes the console stand out a bit more. There's also some of it under the console, which is a bit more visible to be fair. Also, the console was just so busy. Most of the control layout was seen on the trailer, but some of it is completely made up for this add-on. So it was the add-on's creator's job to A, master up some new controls, and then B, add some functions to them. And they did a damn good job of it, because so many of these buttons have a control attached to them. There's some made-up controls that have no function to them, like the relative continuum stabiliser. It literally does nothing except make a little sound, which I'll talk about a bit more later actually. Screens have an animation on them, which looks similar to the Coral TARDISes, but it has some colours changed and some symbols added. And the virtual console design is completely customised for this TARDIS, similar to how it is in the 13th Doctor's TARDIS. The colours and icons have changed to match this interior and exterior, which again just adds a bit more immersion. Also, I have no idea what this thing is coming off the console. I assume it's like a chair or something, but it just seems a bit close to the console. Anyway, I just want to quickly mention that this has a double door version. And all that it does is just add this little small black room, and then there's this pitch black door that you can't even see, but if you click on it, it opens up to the main interior. But it also has the other side of the police doors, and because it's white, the stains and texturing is very obvious and it looks really, really good. I feel like I've said that a lot so far. And also, just the little details once again stand out, like these little hooks on the windows, and the phone, because, well, it's a 
phone box. And even these two door locks. I don't know why there's two, because there's only one lock. But either way, it's cool, I guess. Just to quickly talk about the lighting. This corridor near the door, and I guess this little section on the double door version, has minimal lighting on it. But as you get closer to the main room, the lighting starts to come into effect. Because most of the light is coming off the roundels, which emit this soft orangey light, which you can definitely see here. It even has levels to it. As you can see, these first two panels don't give off as much light as the further ones. Especially this one, as it has a missing roundel entirely. And this console has this spotlight, which I briefly mentioned earlier because of the dust underneath it. It creates a pretty pretty visible white ring around the console. Because the roundels are mere orange light, it contrasts pretty well, which once again helps the console stand out a bit more from the rest of the interior. And it also just makes it look like there's more going on in the room because it just feels a lot more busy, even though it's like barely anything in here. I can't really talk about how immersive this TARDIS is without mentioning the sound design. It seems like such a small thing, but I don't think enough TARDIS add-ons actually focus on it as much as they should. It adds so much more realism into the interior, and it also just matches how it works on the show, with a whole team of sound designers. Obviously, I don't expect that much detail, but to be honest, there kind of is that much in this add-on, so let me explain. Starting with the console, there's a couple default sounds that some controls share, like this one for the coordinates, and the music control, and the relative continuum stabilizer and a few others share this sound. However, the engine release is probably my favourite one. I just find it a bit funny. I have no clue why, though. Like, just listen to that. Although the virtual console sounds also pretty cool. Obviously some controls just have the default sound, but even those aren't that bad. But coming away from the console for a second, the general TARDIS ambient noises are really good as well. It's similar to some other add-ons, but it has a bit of an echo to it, and a lot of varied noises that randomly play, like a mechanical sort of noise and a few other ones. Only a couple other TARDISes have a sound design as in-depth as this one, like the Twice Upon a Time TARDIS and the Toyota TARDISes, which I may and may not be doing a new review on very soon, so subscribe to not miss that. Now for one of the most important parts of any sound design in a TARDIS, the flight noises. Also, just for the record, every time I spawn one of these TARDISes in, it's a bit of a gamble whether I have a visible door button or not. If this happens to you, just remember there is actually a button there, it's just not visible. I don't know why. But if you just interact with it, it will close the doors. The only reason I mention that is because in most classic Hootardises, this red button thing is the door control. But in this interior, it's actually the throttle. So I'll just let you listen to the dematerialization sound, and then I'll talk about it for a second. So it's similar to some other add-ons, but again it has that kind of echo to it. It's also pretty short, but I'll talk about that why in a second. But it's also pretty quiet, but to be fair most classic TARDISes are. You may have noticed that the roundels also dimmed, that's because they have an animation to them when you're in flight. They dim then get brighter, dim then get brighter, etc. And you may see that this rotor animation is a bit different, and that's because the glass on the outside doesn't move, but the bit on the inside goes up and down, it spins around and it lights up. There's a lot kind of going on here. And then the rematerialization sound is pretty similar to the DMAT one. It's pretty quiet with a slight echo, it also has quite a strange beeping noise just before and during the sound, and at the end it has a final kind of beep, just like the one in the 1983 TARDIS. It is a bit different, but it's across the same vein, and if I just go into manual flight, you'll see very quickly why the sound is pretty quick. because the visuals of it are very, very quick too. It has a sort of build up and then it actually disappears. This vortex was seen in the trailers, so it wasn't made up by the add-on creators, but it does look really cool. The red and the black just work so well together, and it really matches this TARDIS. It kind of reminds me of the vortex scene in the 8th Doctor mini episode, The Night of the Doctor. And the landing is also pretty fast. It does work in a bit of a weird way when it appears though. Because it appears, it disappears, and then it'll reappear again. It's a bit bugged out. It still looks cool though. But that little bug also means that when Vortex Flight is disabled, and then you dematerialize,
it appears again very, very quickly, but the sound is still playing. And it will go on for a while too. And at the start of the video I mentioned that the colour of the windows change, even though there's no different exterior options. Well that's because... just give me a second here... When the TARDIS gets below 20 health, the windows will change to this very vibrant red colour, and the flight noise will also change, which you just heard there. But the really cool part is that when you come out of manual flight, the interior goes all red like in most TARDISes, but it won't just have the cloister bell ringing, it has a different alarm as well as some beeping as well as the cloister. But even cooler than that, at random points it has a robotic type voice. I don't think I've ever even heard a voice be used in a TARDIS before, so this is like really cool. I am just going to turn that down for a second though, because you just need to take in this environment. Some of the lights are turned off entirely and the other ones are kind of dimmed. I assume that's like save power and things. And this spotlight is changed to a deep blood red kind of colour, which just makes this whole interior feel really, really like kind of scary to be honest. And if you like these sort of darker, more broken TARDISes, you should definitely check out my review of every single one of the Master's TARDISes in Gmod, as they are all really good. That video is on screen here.